Do you want to know one of the easiest ways to motion track elements in pre-recorded video, such as disc golf, football, golf, and so many more? Using this method, you can create videos like this. All right, well, here we go. Let's hop into it. Before we get started, I just want to let you know that you can pause the video at any time to catch up if you fall behind. I will be keeping a steady pace throughout the video to keep the video's time a little shorter than other videos. All right, first thing you want to do is go to New Composition. Click New Composition, name it whatever you want. Because I'm going to be tracking a unused disc golf tee shot, I will be naming it Unused Disc Golf Track Shot. There you go, very long name. I'll know exactly what it is. I always set my frame rate to 24 frames a second. Um, if you click 24, it actually is going to be just shy of 24, just to let you know. So these are practically the same number. Uh, duration, it's probably going to be 30 seconds will probably work. So there you go. You can copy my settings if you want. You don't have to. I always, the one thing on this page, always have it at least HD, if not higher, and resolution full. Go to the footage you want to be using for your tracking. In this case, I'm going to be using an unused disc golf tee shot, like I mentioned earlier. Drag your clip into the sequence, and you should have it appear here. Make sure this little eye icon is filled in, otherwise you won't be able to see it. Next thing you want to do is trim your clip right before the person throws. In this situation, I'm going to find roughly where I want this uh, cut to go. I'm not going to worry too much about it. I want to have him walking up to throw, throwing, it landing, and then him taking his first step back towards the other disc golfers. So this looks good to me. All right, quick, quick shortcut for you if you want to easily um, trim clips in Adobe After Effects. It's a different uh, keystroke than it is in Premiere. Uh, is Control Shift D, and then you can go ahead and go down to this clip that no longer is useful to you, and just go ahead and delete it. So it's out of the way. We don't have to worry about it anymore. There you go. Right. Nice. Awesome. So that's about where I want to clip it at the end. So once again, Control, Shift, D, and delete the unused clip uh, that will be on the top now. The last one was on the bottom that we deleted. This one's on the top. You can see what I'm doing. And delete, backspace, order the delete button on your keyboard. We'll get it out of here. So now we have our clip. Make sure to select your clip by clicking it on the timeline or clicking it over here in the menu either work and now now what we want to do is make sure our uh, time indicator is all the way set to zero you can just do that by going in this little bar here where my mouse is and just dragging it back or you can just click around uh, you'll get the feel for it really quick okay now we have our clip we want to use my clip is just shy of eight seconds about seven and a half seconds so you can do the math seven times 24 that is the amount of frames that we will have if you're into that sort of stuff all right so this is super important so many people i did this when i first started using adobe after effects is i forgot to pre-compose pre-composing how do you do that well i'll show you you go to your clip you right click on your clip here in, here in the uh, this the uh, selection here and then you go up it's the fifth option from the bottom click pre-compose here's a really important part there are several options in here uh, I am going to stick with the default which is leave all tra uh, attributes um, in once you've selected leave all attributes etc etc click OK all right now it's time to track the camera the moment we've all been waiting for how the heck do you track the camera well it's actually not that hard it's actually one of the easier things to do in after effects because the program does it for you and i'll show you how so if you have the layout default or you've just installed this program this option should be about halfway up the right hand side of your screen over here in this panel it'll be under tracker so click tracker and there's four options here we're going to click track camera and you will see that a blue checkered line will appear that says analyzing in background so what it's doing is reading pixels on the screen this should take if your clip is under 10 seconds hopefully about a minute or two 
Okay, boom, the magic has happened. It's so exciting. I nerd out when this happens because I'm like, yes, it worked. Okay, so now we have all these dots on the screen. You're probably thinking, what in the world is this? So what you want to do next is go to the top left of your screen, if you're on the default layout, that is, uh, and select the selection tool. Make sure you're not on the hand tool, the selection tool. Click that. And then what I recommend when it comes to picking dots is pick something that looks completely different, that um, is a different color to the rest of your image. So for example, lots of green, lots of grass, and there's actually a porta potty center of the screen that has a white lid and there's a tracking dot on that white lid. So I'm going to select the one on the top left corner of the porta potty there you go. Who thought that a porta potty could be a great tracking tool? So I'm going to select that. After I've clicked my selection tool, I'm going to select it. Select it first. Then right click. And then there's, you can do a lot of things with these three options here at the top. For our situation, we're going to create a null end camera. Now you'll see over in our, our scene, we have two extra things over there. All right, next thing we're gonna do, and just before we get on to the next step, I wanna mention that you need to click off of any track that might be selected in the track selection menu here on the left. I'm putting an arrow to where you need to click to deselect any track. All right, on with the next step. Is go up to the top where all your tools are, and you're gonna find this pen tool. The quick shortcut is G. Usually I would be using shortcuts, but for the sake of the tutorial, I am not, just FYI. You're gonna select pen. And if you click and hold on any of these tool icons, you'll see that there are lots of options. Make sure it's just on the default pen tool. So now we have our pen tool. Next thing, this is another thing that trips people up. There's lots of small things in After Effects that you just have to deal with. Um, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, just, just know they're there. So you're gonna go up to the top in your toolbar again, and you're gonna see these options. Fill, Stroke, and Roto Bezier. I do believe is how you say that. And so the first thing you're gonna to do is make sure that Roto, the Roto B, I'll call it, is selected. Uh, that'll smooth out your lines. Next, stroke. I set this usually, the final product is to three or four. While we're working on it, you can you can use it as three or four, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'll set that to five. And fill, You'll, yours will look like this. It'll be a color of some sort. To get rid of the fill, because we do not want fill, definitely not, you hold Alt and click, left click. And you have to click it about three or four times until you see this. It's a gray with a red line through it, meaning there is no fill. And that's perfect. That's what we want. Okay, great. Now, we have our pen tool. We have all the things for our pen set and ready to rumble. And what we're going to do is we are going to draw a line. doesn't have to be giant, doesn't, but I wouldn't make it small. Just any line like this. So you can see this beautiful red line and we'll probably use red for the sake of the tutorial and uh, we'll move on to the next step the next step can be complicated so please pay attention you're gonna go down to your your scene again uh, in the bottom left there and now you have a shape layer that has popped up above everything else it should have popped up um, and you're gonna go over to this this uh, little uh, uh, icon this, this, as you see, says 3D layer allows this layer to be manipulated in three dimensions. You have to click this option below it. If your OBS looks like this, which it shouldn't, but if it does, all you have to do is right click on this little gray bar, columns, and show switches. Okay, all right. I've had that happen so many times where I'm just not having a good day and those disappear because I've misclicked somewhere along the line and I'm like, where'd they go? And it's super easy. Right click, columns, switches. All right, good. We've covered it. We have made our shape layer a 3D layer. This final step will, will make it move with the camera, officially pairing it with the track we have made. Okay, 
So, we're going to go to this little whip tool, it's called. Uh, the squiggly line, as I like to refer to it as. You're going to click on it, and you're going to go to track null. S see what I did? S see what I'm doing here? And release. Another way to do it is to go here and select track null. Now, if we play the clip, and I, and I am press pressing spacebar uh, to play this clip, by the way. Uh, if you're wondering, how the heck did I just get that to go? Spacebar. And you'll see the line, the line looks like it's actually like a part of the shot. So now it is tracked. Great, 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 great. So what do we do next? Here we go. Next step is you go to right before, right, like right as the object you're tracking is, is, is about to move. Probably a frame before if you can. So let's see here. And I'm using the command page up and page down. If you have a 40 or 60% keyboard, I am sorry, because uh, those aren't on there. But page up and page down goes frame by frame. So page up goes back, page down goes forward. So right there. So it's the frame before he releases it. I'm going to go down and select my layer. Make sure that I am on the pen tool up here i have not deselected the pen tool so i should still be on it i'm gonna get my little pointer and take it and put it right on the front of this disc and what i'm gonna do is use my scroll wheel and zoom in a couple notches here so i really can get a good point on this disc look at that good all right so then we're gonna go back down to our sequence and i'm gonna leave this full screen for you so you can see my entire workflow here i'm picking up the pace a bit and we are going to press Control shift d split it. We're going to delete the bit before he releases it here. Delete. Pressing backspace or delete does that. And we're going to play the clip. Look at that throw. Good throw. And it stopped right there. So I like to just play it through and play it by eye, and then I can find tweak with my page up and page down. We're going to zoom in quite a bit here. We're going to find that disk. Uh, might have to go back a little bit to see where it skipped. Skip and stops right there. Okay, so make sure your layer is select. Go to the little pin tool and boom. All right, you see why I didn't want it to be such a fat line because it uh, it makes it harder to see the object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down probably to seven just so y'all can still see it, but I it's easier for me to actually uh, uh, figure this figure this out. We have figured out where the disc has landed. And for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to cut this line right there. I'm actually going to leave the line there so as he walks off, you get about a second or two to see the line. A lot of people, they can watch the line all they want, but if they don't get to see the full line, they'll go, wait, where'd it go? Now we're going to be putting in the curve, the flight tracker, the actual track itself. So we have beginning and we have end, and we're gonna put the actual track on that. So I'm gonna press page down, and I make sure I'm on my pen tool, I have my shape layer selected, and then I'm going to actually click on this line, and it'll create another point, and I can actually drag that line to the front of the, the object. So there's my first point. Now I'm going to put in my second point, and I'm not gonna be super finicky about this so i'm gonna press page down again i'm gonna click on my uh my line and drag and put it right at the front of the disc um, page down again click on my line put it on the front of the disc i'm gonna hold space space uh allows you to to go to this hand tool without actually having to uh, deselect another tool so hold space and you can actually move your canvas uh, all these shortcuts, guys, uh, are easily found by searching in the help menu and also just Googling is the best thing. So I've moved it where I want to. It goes right back to the pen tool. Don't have to reselect. Page down. Click on the line. Okay, so you get the idea. I'm going to fast forward so you don't have to watch me do this. What would it be? Uh, a, a hundred frames more. 
quick note while I'm about halfway through this, you don't have to put a point every frame. Doing that would be, make it a bit more jagged. When there's when it gets farther away, each movement becomes a bit more jagged the more points you put. Okay, so now we have our rough line in. That took me about, in real time, about two, maybe three minutes. So as you can see, the line stays, it's tracked to the porta potty, which is hilarious to me. Now, how do we make this line appear? What the heck? First thing you wanna do is select your shape layer. Go to the first frame where your line uh, uh, appears. Then what you're going to want to do is go down, go to the left of the name of your layer, um, which I haven't changed it. It's just shape layer two, and select your little arrow. Your shape layer, if you haven't created any others, would be called shape layer one. Then go to add. I'm going to leave my mouse there for a sec so you can kind of see where I'm holding my mouse. So you see contents. To the right of that is add. Click this little uh, this little uh, button that looks like a play button that would be on YouTube. Click that, and you'll see. And I understand this might be a bit tricky following this, but I'm trying to pace myself here. You will see trim paths. Trim paths. We're going to select that, and that'll add trim paths down here below contents. So next step is to go to the arrow below trim paths. We're going to create a keyframe by selecting this little stopwatch tool. We're going to click start. And what I like to do, by the way, just a quick tip, is you just click and hold and you can drag down and you select all of them. So you click once. And that just means that if you're f tweaking like I always do down the line where you get a bit more advanced, that'll help you out because then you don't have to go back and manually click each one. All right. So we have done that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to start, click right here. You'll see my mouse actually changes to a little hand with a little arrows either side of the index finger. And I'm going to go all the way up to 100 by dragging right. See that? You can also uh, type it in here, 100, zero, zero, and then enter. Uh, but I just like to drag. It's a lot quicker for me. A lot of people are good typers, though. I'm not. So now the line has disappeared. Uh-oh. But here's the magic. So next step is to go to where the disc lands. For this, it might be tricky to see. So once again, scroll wheel, use your space bar, hold it down, and then you can move the image around. So I'm looking to see when that disc stops. Right, right there. All right, then I'm gonna go back to start where I had just changed the value to 100 and I'm going to change it back down to zero. And you can see, see, see this line? You see that line? That's what we're, that's what essentially what we're doing. Now, check this out, guys. This, this is the exciting part. This is where people call me a dork for getting so excited, but look at this, check this out. We just did this. I mean, check this out, man. There you go, man. Nice. So awesome, right? Now you're thinking, ah, oh, that didn't line up to the disc, Callum. Ah, how do I get that? Well, it's super, super easy, believe it or not. Now that you figured out how to use trim paths and you know how to set keyframes, we're gonna go back into our sequence and just manually put in some keyframes to keep up with the disc. A uh, really quick tip for keyframing is go up just below your image if you're on the default layout and click off of the toggle mask and shape path. So I'm going to manually change the uh, the keyframe here to catch up with the disc you can see and I'm actually gonna have to zoom in a bit that's spacebar with scroll wheel and then when you're holding spacebar you can move around like I said it's hard to remember to be honest at least for me it was for a while so you can see there we go so when it starts the line ooh, it's still not quite catching up there is it right right in there so what I'm gonna do go like that all right and Oh, and 
in there. So what I'm doing is I'm just going a few frames ahead at a time, and if the line doesn't keep up or goes too far, I tweak it with the start option underneath trim paths. And you tweak it by changing the value back and forth. If you click on the number and then drag left to right, it changes the length of the line. You really have to do it by eye. I can't tell you the exact number that you'll need, but you'll figure it out as time goes on. I'm gonna fast forward so you don't have to watch me do this. All right, so now I have the line roughly, very roughly, I might add, uh, tracked on and matching the, the speed and flight of the disc. So let's check this out. There we go. And that was a good throw, by the way. All right, so let's clean things up. I'm not going to do any more adjustment to my actual track because I'm trying to keep this short. Let's clean things up, get this thing finished and ready to go. All right, so a nice quick thing that you can do right at the end to make your line look better. And for the sake of your eyes, I'm actually going to make this line a lot thicker so you can see what I'm about to do. You go to your shape layer, go to contents, then select your shape. In my case, it is labeled shape one. Once you've opened up shape, go to stroke one. In stroke one, you're gonna go to line cap, line cap. And if you're lost or you're falling behind, pause the video and go back and you can see exactly what I've done. Then go to this drop down menu here, next to line cap and you're gonna click round cap round cap and you see what that just did so I'm a uh, I'm gonna zoom in so you can uh, see what that just did it rounded the corners heck yeah I am going to set my uh, line width back to five okay the last thing that we're gonna go over in detail here is tapering the line so that means as the line goes the back end will fade and taper as the name says so how to do that is you're going to go to shape you're going to go to stroke and then you'll see down at the bottom of stroke it says taper so we're going to open this up and we're going to take a look at it so this is once again another thing where you're just gonna have to fiddle a little bit to really get your hands on it and, and figure it out for yourself because there's different ways to do it uh what we're going to do is we are going to go to the first frame of your animation which page up page down always helps so right there we're going to go to well I, what i'm gonna do is just select all of them uh you can just select the first two if you want there start and end and I am going to then go to the end of the clip and I'm going to go to end here and I'm going to select my taper. I kind of like the look of that and kind of like it like that. So what I just did was I faded it, I faded it about halfway through the line. By the by the end of the throw, when it lands, it settles. The l initial line has faded and it has narrowed. So it almost looks like the disc is leaving a stream of air in the form of this red line behind. So it kind of adds this little effect that's subtle, but people's brains go, oh, that kind of made sense because as air travels around this disc, it's nice and fat and then tapers off. Time to export. So I have added a little mask at the end, really rough. Okay, time to export. This is the easy part. You go to file. Export. Add to render queue. All right, now here, pay attention. I'm going to go kind of fast. You can always pause and then go back. Render settings. Best settings. Best full. Make sure those are set. I'm going to set my end time. If you set duration, it won't actually do anything. So end time, and it's going to be that length because that's what I want. You can do whatever the heck you want. Quick tip, go into your sequence before exporting and copy the exact time you want if it's a specific time. If not, then just export the entire clip. Click OK. Click OK. All right. Output. 
module. I'll put module. Make sure that you have QuickTime. And if if this was a transparent clip, this line needed to be transparent, I would select RGB and alpha. But of course, because I don't have a transparent background on this, it is a video that isn't an option. Okay, final thing, specify where you want this to go and render. This shouldn't take too long. All right, guys, here is the final clip, the final result. Thank you so much for watching. This video was actually made as a part of a graduate studies program at Appalachian State University. I am currently a graduate student studying towards an MA in New Media and Global Perspectives. Thank you again and have a great rest of your day.